Just a little disclaimer. I love Steven Universe. This series is done purely for fun and to point out some flaws in Steven Universe logic, not for any malicious or defaming intentions. Thank you. One more quick thing before we begin. Due to the complexity of recording mobile games and because of a recent ban that Samsung put on recording internal audio, I had to go about a very particular way of recording this game. And for some reason, when I did this particular way, some of the footage just got corrupted, and so some of it may be jumpy, go to a black screen, all these kind of problems that I don't know how to fix. I apologize if any of the footage looks like that, but there's really nothing I can do, and given that this is an RPG, I really didn't want to have to replay any of it. Hope it isn't too distracting. Please enjoy the video. How are their buttons clacking here when Steven is very clearly playing on a touch screen? Also, who the hell plays RPGs with touch controls? That just sounds... Ugh. Also, also, this entire game's art style is Lenny Faces and I can feel my will to live slowly slipping away by reading that sentence. Never mind, gems are back! Those tablets are pretty damn expensive, you know. So sure, just throw it. Can I see? Oh no, absolutely not. It's very dangerous. Well, in the hands of a powerful gem, anyway. But in the hands of Steven, uh, not so much. Wouldn't it arguably be more dangerous in the hands of someone inexperienced in it, though? They don't know how it works, so they could accidentally do, well, exactly what Steven does in this game. Alright, but be careful. Why is Garnet letting Steven handle the prism? I would bring up everyone's favorite gem power that has two words and starts with F and ends with N, but I'm gonna be lenient this time and assume in this game's universe Garnet can't use it. You'd think she'd still be sensible enough to not hand a powerful gem army creator to a 13 year old boy. Also, just take this as a general complaint for the rest of the game, but while I may have been joking about the Lenny shit earlier, this art style is just ugly to me. The animation just feels awkward and unnatural, everybody has three fucking fingers for some reason, and in my eyes it's just unappealing. Oh no! Now the light creatures are loose in the world! Oh come on, judging from the arc of the light creatures here, they can't have traveled much farther than the temple's front fucking lawn. Hell, this orange one here looks like it's just gonna land in the ocean right next to the temple! Which it ends up in the desert later, so what the fuck? What, you're trying to tell me that this red one somehow got from just over here to a volcanic looking place? Four heroes, teaming up for a magic adventure. This is like the greatest RPG ever! More like the most generic RPG ever. What the hell were those noises? Why are the words end and turn randomly capitalized in this sentence? Why, thank you! I don't see how jumping up and giving a thumbs up heals someone's mortal wounds, but okay. This music doesn't loop properly. And you know, while we're talking about the battle system, I think I should bring up what is, in my opinion, this game's biggest problem. Garnet is simply broken. Her attacks may cost way more star points to use than everybody else's, but her damage output is so huge by the end of the game that you only really need to use Pearl to finish off Small Fry with little health. And dude, poor Amethyst. She gets shafted to be used only for groups of Small Fry. You can try to use her with groups of big enemies around, but even with an attack boosting muscle band on her, the damage isn't even close to what Garnet can do. Hell, there's one attack that Garnet gets later that lowers an enemy's defense while still possibly attacking it for the same damage as her normal attack. And it can be upgraded later to do more damage. Amethyst gets the same ability later, but you simply just don't use it because her version costs 4 star points while Garnet's only costs 3 for nearly the same damage. And combined with one of Steven's abilities that he gets later on, Garnet just becomes an unstoppable force of destruction that leaves Pearl and Amethyst near worthless in her wake. And I just don't like that. You could choose to not use Garnet during a playthrough to challenge yourself, but if you have to do that to make the game even remotely challenging, something's wrong. 20 sins, please. Okay, but it's still light. It's not like being refracted makes it a solid or anything. Here we go! Yeah! I needed that! 
Why do they force me to give an item to someone with full health here? That's just a waste of an item use. Neato Burrito! Neato Burrito. I'm sorry, but did Garnet just have almost a third of her health taken away from a bat? I get it's made of light, but it's a fucking bat! I've never seen an instance of you guys leveling up in the show. I feel so upgraded! Bubble is the most broken ability in the entire game. With enough star fruit, and there's a pretty easy spot to grind for it later, you can protect every single member of the team from any damage whatsoever. Just gonna tack on a sin for how busted this ability is. Must be my lucky day! Yeah, it's hidden right in the middle of the fucking room. So secretive. Why is this voice line so much quieter than the music? The game fucking crashed back to my phone's home screen during this boss. Are you kidding me? And of course, because this game is coded so well, the items that I used before the game crashed, those being a muscle band and a couple starfruit, were still gone. I lost those items forever due to no fault of my own, and was forced to play more defensively as a result. The fuck? Just gonna put this out there. These gauntlet stages are fucking annoying. It's kind of nice that the game offers a challenge where your items are limited, but to do this, they sacrifice field exploration in exchange for the monotony of battle after battle after battle for 20 minutes or more. And God help you if you die and have to do it again from the beginning. Seriously, fuck these things. They all suck. <laughs> I kinda like this interaction. Yay, stop! Remember how I said Bubble was the most broken ability in the game? Bubble 2 cuts the star cost of the ability in half. Having trouble with a battle? For three of your five starting star points, you can literally protect your entire team from damage and still have enough star points for Garnet to attack. And you get this in the second area. My god, Grumpy Face. Steven is improperly layered on top of this bush. Skills! The delivery of this line is very awkward. The line on these two pillar things down here seem to be glitching out. This amethyst boss can blow me. Seriously, she hurts if you're so much as half a second off your blocking. Granted, the healing system in this game makes this pretty piss easy, but if you went with a more attack-oriented team like I did... Fuck. Now that I'm actually able to go through one of these doors, can I just say how fucking worthless these secret areas are? Like seriously, these add absolutely nothing to the game except optional areas that, while yes, contain some pretty neat shit, it's just obvious padding. You could just cut these areas from the game and have these items spread throughout the other main areas and I bet no one would notice a difference. Not to mention, the inclusion of these doors also add red gemstones into the mix, which are so hard to find at some points that developers literally had to write their own walkthrough for them. I 100%ed this game twice, and even I still don't find these areas very enjoyable. Especially since these areas look so similar to ones I've already been to, that I just want to get to the new shit already. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, and if you thought Amethyst was bad, wait until you realize how much focus pain this garnet can deal. Check this bullshit out. She just took all of Garnet's health in one attack just because I didn't block. There's challenging, and then there's just bullshit design. And then, of course, there's this boss that combines spread damage, focus damage, and dead weight. This boss is easy if you know what you're doing, just... <laughs> fucking lay off already, Jesus! What is with this six-hit combo, and why does the animation for it look very awkward? They couldn't have drawn out some more frames showing Garnet drawing back her punches more or something? It took me until after two whole areas to realize the music here doesn't loop properly either. Neato Burrito! 
The fact that I'm able to open my backpack and this chest at the same time just shows the quality programming on display here. This all has no period at the end. Yeah, thanks for an attack I can't block, assholes. This is cool, thanks for the arbitrary oh they can't dodge because plot reasons bullshit grumpy face. God, it's so contrived it hurts, especially since I literally curb stomp this boss in three turns. Gem, do your thing. <laughs> It's kind of disappointing the fusion was relegated to just Alexandrite and only a super attack. Granted, Save the Light expands on this idea, but I feel like so much more could have been done with it here. Feel Awesome has its last E shifted to the next line and it looks fucking horrible. The game crashed at the end of the shitty ass gauntlet and I had to do it all again, fuck this shitty ass game! The music literally stopped working when I loaded this boss again. Oh, I know. Do your thing, thing! Why does this enemy's dying animation lag so much behind its dying sound? Well, that was kind of anticlimactic. I mean, no dialogue for the giant whale that just came out of nowhere. No dialogue after the boss died. The fish that the boss spawned still just being there afterwards. This part of the game was rushed, wasn't it? I'm just gonna go off on a whim and say that the red area is my favorite area in the game. No matter what kind of team you built throughout the game, this is actually the first point in the game that genuinely challenges you. For example, even though my Garnet has 25 attack here, which is really good at this point in the game, it still wasn't enough to outright annihilate these enemies. And because defense wasn't a focus for me during these playthroughs, these enemies actually really hurt, and I love that. Of course, this goes spiraling down the drain the instant I get the Frost Badge, which ups Garnet's attack to 38 and cracks the rest of the game in two, as well as getting the Garnet Badge in the next area, which ups it even further to 43. 43. Every attack does close to or over 100 damage, and two shots almost everything. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Minus three sins, please. I believe in you! <laughs> and then the game crashed. No joke. Seriously, this ending sucks. The concept is actually pretty nice for an ending, but A, the god-awful animation is back, B, only two things are said in this cutscene, not counting the laugh, and they're both recycled from the show, and C, why the fuck would the light want to become Steven of all things? May I remind you that according to my playthrough, these two only became aware of each other's existence seven hours ago, and I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't want to become the person who just tried to kill me in that amount of time. Not to mention the ending isn't even satisfying. It lasts just a little over 20 seconds, doesn't offer anything of substance other than, oh, the light turns into a bunch of Stevens, I guess. And then right after it ends, it just boots you back to the title screen. Or, you know, it just crashes the game. Ugh, what a sour way to end things off. Pretty sure this isn't supposed to be over top of the characters. And if it is, well, it looks ugly. And yes, in case you're wondering, this part is after the ending because the gauntlet unlocks after the boss. Leaving this badge with no use at all because the game is already 100% complete. And because the game crashed earlier, the final boss wasn't marked as defeated, so the red prism isn't in the center of the triangle here like it should be. 
To prove this, I went ahead and put the old save file from my first playthrough back into the game, and bam, there it is. <sighs> okay, you know what? Aside from all the complaints I've just given, I do think Attack the Light is a really fun game. The battle mechanics are really solid and provided a good foundation for Grumpy Face to build upon come Save the Light. The character interactions are really nice little tidbits for those who are really into the show like I am. And although I haven't mentioned it much here, the music in some places is really nice, like in the Lunar Sea Spire and the Strawberry Battlefield. For $3, I'd say this is a pretty good deal you'd be stupid for passing up on. If you haven't already and have a mobile phone ready for all the tapping you'll be doing, please get this game. It's so much fun. Take off 10 sins, please. Special thanks to my $5 patrons, Orem Juice and Bear Kawaii Desu. For some reason, Patreon is being kinda stupid and not telling me if anyone else is pledging, so I really don't know if those that have already pledged have pulled their pledge or if Patreon just isn't showing them to me. But if there's any inconsistencies, then please let me know and I'll try to fix it by next time. But for now, thank you for those who've pledged. <laughs>